Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of God, the compassionate, the merciful. Uh, I think once people come up to the podium, I think they can remove their masks. Uh, my name is Ibrahim Hooper. I'm National Communications Director with the Council on American-Islamic Relations. Uh, we're here today in support of uh, the Manassas Mosque uh, and its uh, the Quranic tiles that are being held at Dulles Airport and threatened with destruction. So we're, as a community, we're trying to respond to do the best we can to have these uh, religious items released and delivered to the mosque so they can be utilized for the spiritual benefit of the uh, local uh, Northern Virginia Muslim community. Uh, first to say a few words will be uh, Nihad Awad, uh, CARE's National Executive Director. Um, together we've had a long history of dealing with these kinds of uh, issues in support of the Muslim community and he'll just say a few words and then we'll go on to a couple other speakers. Thanks. Nihad Awad. Thank you, Ibrahim. Good morning. My name is Nihad Awad, N-I-H-A-D, A-W-A-D, National Executive Director of CARE. So why are we here today is simple. There are a lot of government policies that are good and make sense. However, some of these policies do not make sense. And the issue that we're talking about today is one of those policies that do not make sense. The United States has imposed sanctions on Iran, and those policies, the policy of sanctions against Iran, has been seen as a collective punishment uh, against the Iranian people. And now, uh, as a consequence of this, is a religious community in Northern Virginia, Man Manassas Mosque. The government confiscated religious tiles for religious purposes for the use of constructing a new mosque for this growing community. This is, uh, the tiles are religious items. They're not weapons of mass destruction subject to sanctions. And therefore, we believe that the government should have common sense, should not punish a local community uh, because it wants to exercise and practice religious liberty, which is one of the main foundations of our nation. So simply, I would ask the Biden administration uh, to make an exception and to release these tiles so that the Manassas Mosque can benefit from it. Uh, we also ask the Treasury Department, specifically the Office of Foreign Assets Control to help facilitate and make a gesture, goodwill gesture, for the Muslim community to enjoy uh, building the mosque and reaping the benefit of having these religious tiles. These religious tiles, as you can see, they have inscriptions from verses of the Quran. Uh, they're considered sacred. They come from a sacred place from Iran, which have been donated to this mosque and they don't harm anybody. Uh, and that's why common sense should really dominate. Uh, we have seen when um, religious liberties have been confiscated and came under attack from the previous administration. I hope that re religious liberty and religious practices like simple uh, one like this will continue to flourish under the Biden administration. Thank you. Now we'll hear from Imam Nahidian, uh, who could perhaps give us a little background of what happened and what the current situation is uh, regarding the tiles. Imam Nahidian. Maybe you spell your name. Okay. Thank you very much for coming. My name is Abu Nahidian. A B U. The last name is N A H, I D I A N. Uh, thank God I've been with this mosque at the same time that the care was established. 1994, this mosque was established too. The tiles actually are the symbol of uh, always a permanent paint and then the verses of Quran which is on it. All the time we have received these tiles 
through the custom and it was no problem to release it. This time, one individual that probably, I don't know what was his plan, uh, stopped and he says it is illegal to bring anything from Iran. I said, well, anything now, as you probably have to go ahead and see it, that these are tiles and they are not for sale at all. He says, I don't care, and finally, of course, it was seized. You probably know, they call it niche. You see the pictures that they are here? This is, has been every masjid, every mosque on the earth has the direction towards the house of Abraham. Abraham is a common area between all Abrahamic faiths, which you probably know. I don't want to go through a lot of it. But every mas mosque has a direction towards the house that it was built by Abraham. And it is called Mehrab or Nech, if you want to call it. The direction of the Nech is all over the earth, one direction, to the cube or the Kaaba that was established by Abraham in Mecca. So the mosques usually, in order to say that we are united together in one concept, and the concept is the, the, the uh, uh, one qibla for all of us, one direction for all of us, one niche for all of us, it's been donated to the mosque. It doesn't make any difference. What mosque and what part of the earth, their direction is the middle of the areas that it is called Kaaba. So that has done. But unfortunately, no matter how much we tried it, even though before I have the uh, evidences that before we have released it, and it came to the custom, and they know what it was, and they gave it back to us, this time they are holding it. Therefore, we are asking Biden administration that kindly this is an asset to our, um, to our community, to the United States. This is the beauty of our country. Let it come and let it stay and the verses of Quran, which is a sacred and it's destroying that one is not against the faith of the Muslims only, but humanity anyway. So we are asking you to release it and please consider that don't do that things as it is not for government, but it is for the humanity. Thank you very much for coming. And finally, in support of this issue, uh, we have uh, Rafiuddin Ahmed, president of the Muslim Association of Virginia, and he's also chairman of the Virginia Council of Muslim Organizations. Brother Rafi. Thanks. Good afternoon. Actually, not afternoon yet. Good morning still. <laughs> Uh, my name is uh, Rafiuddin Ahmed, R-A-F-I-U-D-D-I-N-A-H-M-E-D. -E um, I represent one of the largest mosques here in Prince William County, uh, which is called Dar Nur Islamic Community Center. I'm also the, the chairman of Virginia Council of Muslim Organization, which is an umbrella organization and that represent many of the Islamic uh, organizations within Virginia. Um, I'm here in support of our brothers here in Manassas Mosque, uh, which who are also the members of Virginia Council of Muslim Organization. We uh, at Darul Nur had experienced something similar back in 2010, when uh, a group from our mosque uh, was going to perform Hajj, which is one of the pillars of Islam. It's an obligation uh, incumbent on all Muslims to be able to fulfill once in their lifetime. And uh, their passports, they were o uh, mailed overnight from California to come here uh, to Virginia. However, they were withheld by CBP uh, and uh, considering it is a suspicious package. Which in turn, the, the 17 people who were going to leave to perform Hajj, their obligation as a Muslim American they missed their flight. Fortunately, we were able to work with uh, CBP uh, to resolve the issue, and eventually those 17 people were able to perform their uh, um, Hajj. However, something, you know, issues small like this when there is an artifact or something uh, that has a religious value to it, you know, I hope that, you know, our government agencies are able to come up with a, a sensible resolution to this so they are able to build their the mosque. We appreciate everything that CBP does, uh, the Homeland Security does, our Treasury Department, 
to make sure that we're all, as Americans, we are safe from any threat from abroad. We appreciate that. However, this is a no, this is a common sense issue. It's a, it is a, uh, has, as Brother Nehat said, there, it's not a, um, you know, weapons of mass destruction. It, this has a, a religious value to that, you know, we all take very dearly. And I encourage the Biden administration and I encourage all of our uh, agencies to come up a, uh, a common sense uh, resolution and resolve this issue so our brothers here uh, in this mosque are able to build their mosque to accommodate their larger congregation. Uh, and uh, so I want to thank all of you for coming here. Uh, and I encourage our administration to please step in and uh, resolve this issue. And uh, lastly, I have to um, wonder if this was a statue of Virgin Mary, we would be here, would we be here discussing this or not? So thank you. Uh, before we take uh, any questions, uh, did you want to, sister, did you want to say anything? Okay. <laughs> All right, then, if anybody has any questions for any of the uh, speakers. Yep, go ahead. I do have a question. Maybe I don't know who can address it. Um, understanding you're not lawyers, but as you've looked into this, is it your understanding? Do you think the law is being misapplied, or do you think the law is they are technically correct about the law, but that the, the law doesn't make yeah. sense? I mean. I'm not a lawyer, <laughs> but um, in my communications, we just haven't had a response from the government. So we don't know the exact reasoning, at least from our perspective, we don't know, you know why they're claiming they're holding these things. So we'd, li we'd like to hear their interpretation of the law and why they're holding it, and, and so it can be resolved. But Imam Nahidian, I don't know if, or did you have? I can just say, say something quick. Look, we're not discussing the geopolitics and international conflicts between the United States and Iran over the claims of uh, nuclear weapons and uh, weapons of mass destruction. Our government already made some fatal mistakes after 9-11 when they claimed Iraq had weapons of mass destruction and see what happened. But here, uh, regardless of the politics of the sanction policies of the U.S. We're talking about common sense. Laws do have common sense when it comes to the application. And therefore, this issue is the victim of bureaucratic complications and lack of leadership to make a decision. So we're not saying don't apply the law. We say apply common sense when you apply the law or the policy. And also, it's a good time to examine and revise these policies. What religious ties like these that we see around us would harm the US? It harms only a religious community like the one we are with here. So uh, it's not just, we're not saying that the policy is bad, although personally I think, I think it's bad, but I'm saying uh, the the government should have common sense when they can make exceptions to some rules because it's obvious this is a religious item and we believe in religious liberty in this country. Mr. Owens, did, you, did, did Imam Nahidian say that, that in the past they've been allowed to come in, to your mosque and even though there was the law is the same, they were allowed in the past, but you think it's just someone this time is kind of stepping in the way and yeah, it's starting the whole the snowball? Yes, they, in fact, they had it before. You removed your mask. Could you just, if you don't mind, just thank you. Yes. <laughs> in fact, I have the evidences here for you if you want to see it, that before the same shipment, the same kind of shipment arrived and we received it. And the person that he was asking, is it a gift? I said, yes, it is. How much is value? I said, frankly, it doesn't have value. If you put it outside, nobody's going to buy it. Same thing as here. If you want to say $5, it's $5 or whatever it is. But that is, yes, indeed, we had it before, but this time, unfortunately, it was confiscated. When was the last time that you had a shipment come in without problem? About eight months ago.
So is it a new policy with this administration or is this a holdover policy? It's just a different interpretation of the policy? Frankly, since I'm not a politician too much of that matter, probably some disliking of someone, someone that is disliking or have heard that, as you probably know, some of the medias, as soon as it's Islam, it is connected with terrorism, maybe that was the idea that he had in his mind. God knows best, but I hope that it wasn't the issues. But however, you could tell that no matter how much I said that, did you ask what it is? He didn't want to listen to me at all. He says, I am not going to go against the laws. And I said, I'm not going against the law neither. But that is what it was. And finally, uh, unfortunately, they said that we can we send it to OFAC. So you spoke to them? Yes, indeed. You did? Yes, indeed. I have been speaking to them continuously. But they don't want to listen. And yes. is it true, I'm sorry, but did they say that either we return them or we destroy them? They say either we re-export them or destroy them. That's right. It is written down, actually. If you want me to give it to you, I'll give it to you. Um, just to follow up on that, just very quick, I'm sorry. Yeah, hey, Uber. Like I say, the tiles have Quranic verses on them. It is, is destroying the tiles equivalent to like a destruction of a Quran? I would say so, because it's the same idea. It doesn't say anything. The verses of Quran is here. The, side, the tile pictures is here. And it talks about the uh, uh, community that it is united together under the law of God. What is it that you don't want the law of God and becoming the part of our life? So in reality, destroying the tiles that it has the laws and the verses of Quran is the same thing as destroying the uh, verses of Quran or the whole Quran. Doesn't matter. And I'm, I'm sorry if you said this prior, but uh, how long have they been held at Dulles? Since June 23rd. June 23rd. There we have the, he can provide the way bill or whatever. Okay. It has. Uh, but as the Imam said, uh, you know, sometimes we've been doing these kinds of cases uh, for many years, and often you'll find that it's one individual who exercises their personal uh, prejudices in applying whatever policy, whether it's in the workplace, denial of religious rights, prayers, or hijab, or any. Sometimes it's not a corporate policy, it's not a government policy, but it ends up being an individual who uh, applied uh, their interpretation in a certain way, and that leads to these kinds of things. And then once it's applied, then it kind of goes downhill from there. Uh, any other questions? Yeah, Mr. Yeah. Or either yourself or Mr. Uh, Imam Hedi and Katel, the plan to build a new mosque, where is that? Is it going to, I mean, this is beautiful, but you would drive by this on the outside and not know this is a mosque. Are you, what are your plans for the future? Well, the plan for future is that there should be a land that, of course, forgive me if I'm putting it a little bit in lengthy matters. The land was not built by me. It was built by the owner of the land. Therefore, the praise of the land that it is everywhere belongs to the creator of us. And therefore, the mosque is a place that to introduce that we belong to you and we are not against you. So that common issues will bring peace and justice on earth. And that land is about six miles away. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask just one more question about sure. sort of the significance of the tiles and I guess how the, is this a common thing that uh, a mosque from elsewhere would send tiles for, a, for an expansion or how did the relationship come about, just sort of the background? Yeah, I, I think uh, the real factor in here is Iran. I think tiles come in from Turkey or from Morocco or from any number of places around the world on a, probably on a daily basis. So I think Iran is the, the factor here. But. And, and that's a common practice for mosques elsewhere to, to help in that regard? Or? Okay, th there are two, two issues, I believe, and I, I uh, don't speak for the mosque. Um, the, the Muslim world is rich with uh, geometric designs, as you see, uh, hundreds of years of expertise in art. Um, and uh, the Muslim community uh, would like always to import uh, these uh, um, skills and beauty uh, to their mosques. And some of them are made uh, at home here, but uh, uh, it did not really reach the level of perfection uh, that you see. The second factor, I, I was told that this uh, special tile comes from 
uh, the city of Qom in Iran, which is a special and sacred place. So it had like an added value. Um, so it, 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 it's very common that Muslim communities around the world import from uh, known places. For example, Persian rugs come from, from Persia, from Afghanistan, uh, from Turkey. There are special uh, you know, products that come from uh, special countries. Um, the Muslim communities uh, in, in the Western world have not developed the uh, homemade skill sets to produce their own uh, perfection in, art, in artwork, but I'm saying sometimes maybe they do in some areas. But tiles, uh, I haven't seen yet. So as you can see, this beautiful design usually get imported from, uh, from outside. And, 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 and sorry, <laughs> can you tell us anything specifically about these tiles? Are they new? Are they ancient? Where were, do we know where they I, were? I'm assuming they're new, but yeah, new. ancient design maybe, but new but tiles. brand new tiles. <laughs> It is a new tiles for a specific area. It doesn't fit anywhere else. It is made for that size that it is here for the project. It's actually eight and a half feet long by close to nine feet high. So it is actually made for that specific area. And it is new and with respect to all of They're you. They're custom made. It's a custom made for that specific area Sorry. with the verses of Quran that just one this of the fine book. kind of a tie. There's nowhere in the world something similar to this. Is no, no right? such a thing. There is no yeah, such a well, thing. Well, that's what they're asking. New well, custom right. made, made for your new yes. mosque. Yes. For a specific area of that mosque. For that's the right. niche, the niche. prayer niche of the niche. So okay. these could have come in a day later, and we wouldn't be here. Possibly. <laughs> that guy was off. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right, well, uh, okay. if you have any more questions, uh, everybody's available one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, again, thanks for coming, and uh, we hope this gets resolved. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you.